never know who is reading your article when you publish it. We must recognize the difference in culture and the language. Try not to write in a self-centered way. Precise wording is the key. Uh, how precise can you be depend on your vocabulary. You need to build up your vocabulary, okay? It is essential for you to learn the precise meanings and functions of the words even the book down. The key to choosing the correct words is keep is to keep enlarging or growing your vocabulary. You can read this book, which is my book. You also can read many other books in formal writing. In addition to reading, remember we learn by uh, different uh, sense, reading, listening, daily conversation, and also improve vocabulary if you pay attention. International students encourage to read at least one article a day, newspapers, magazines, biographies, and so forth. Watching television even is fine. Been... After all, the most important is practice. Okay, you must practice, practice as much as possible. Too. I'm going to list typical word errors. So this way you can learn faster. Typical mistakes include wordiness, in Chinese writing, Chinese was a, a very precise, okay, and the thrift using words. But in, in the other culture, especially the European and the Middle East culture, they write a lot of things just for one single idea. Vague, vague words, that's not because of your intention, rather it is because of your capability. You need to build your vocabulary, grow it. And the slang is maybe you know too much. When you have too much, you are local. You tend to use slang because that's what you use. Avoid slangs and the jargons in writing. Also avoid the localisms. Okay, using the word "fact" is very annoying because in technical writing, you can present your facts without mentioning it. Thing. Okay, thing. Something sometimes I use in writing, but um, it's not clear what is the thing. Okay? Try to be clear. For example, the accuracy improved significantly. There is a significant effect if you know the exact meaning of the words after the significant, you would choose more precise words to see that. For example, significant is it strong? Significant impact. Actually means significant, which means a strong impact. Is it because of the importance? You say the air pollution has a significant, is important, is significant to something. It actually means important. Is it major? Right? Have some major impact, major influence. Depend on the context. Significant is not what you want to write down. Why? Because in technical writing, significant must follow statistic analysis. Nominalization, you have some words, one word can describe something, but you use two words. For example, okay, perform a study, which means study. The first study is a noun, the second study is a verb. And you also have a take a measurement, uh, conducted the research. It's awkward. It's not authentic. It's not a native English speaker would write. Okay? Nothing is wrong with the grammar because a perform a study is a verb followed by a noun. However, when you read it, like very awkward. Chapter two gives an introduction of the methods used in this study. Many, many students, including my graduating PhD students, maybe when they graduate, they still write like this, if nobody told them this is wrong. Simply introduce it. Next, perform the uh, study. Uh, this means study. Avoid using. 
avoid using as modifier. If you have use, use it for what? This is exactly what my PhD student wrote. It's like we mentioned some. I'm not a linguist. I don't understand why it happens. And it does happen to me before. It also happened to my students. Try to avoid it. This is a very typical mistake. Okay. Shift over functions. For example, talk the talk, walk the walk, right? This is the verb. This is a noun. This is the verb. This is a noun. After we present the results, we carried out the in-depth analysis. And after introduce the condition, and then we look up. The look up means this takes care of. Don't use jargon. I just simply like that. But sometimes when you are a native speaker, you can't help because it's easy. That's actually becomes a problem for the native speakers, not non-native speakers. For example, debug code, the jargon in computer science. Jargons help with the conciseness but it reduces clarity. Clarity, essential, conciseness is important. Chill. Chill, we know it's a frozen, extremely cold, but it means relax. Hey, buddy, chill. It means calm down, don't get excited. To help you, just make sure you know the words exactly before you write it down. Last. On the list of what errors are fact. As a matter of a fact, in fact, to be honest, to be frank, okay, those are wordiness and the useless. It's just redundant, okay? Just remove them. And it's unprofessional. As a matter of a fact, our research should solve the viscosity is a dominating factor for nanofiber fabrication by electrosplitting. Simply remove it, right? This is from another journal called the Chemical Engineering Science. This is the published work as a matter of fact. It's not necessary. When you read it, you see, as a matter of fact, there's a comma, there's a comma, there's a comma, there's a comma, there's a comma. Another one is in the same article, it says based on the well-known fact. Comma. Well, this is rambling, right? But but I'm not using this example for rambling. I'm trying to show you these facts. You just cross this. Then you say in this one, and then you revise the sentence. I'll give you another example. This is published in a textbook. Okay, you can see that it's a pretty well written textbook. Why? Because it's in the sixth edition. I you can download it from this link. Anyway, I searched the entire document. They have that is, that is, that is. When I give this lecture, I always say that that is another word, actually. Why? Because I want to emphasize something, right? I want to say it again, one more time, so you can get my point. You can understand what I'm trying to say. I explain one concept using multiple approaches so students can understand. However, when you write it down, you don't explain it using same sentence or the same idea with different sentences. Avoid overusing the word to, try not to use I, we. Occasionally you use it, obviously, Oh, that's called emotional words, okay? No research has been done is uh, very uh, arrogant. Unfortunately, there is the wrong. Art. Another word I want to emphasize is respective. It means belonging or relating separately to each of two or more individuals. The order of mention respectively often appears at the end of the sentence. Example, this is wrong as being respectively used. You say the other verb, but that's not its a function. Its a function is A, B, and C. Corresponding to equation one, equation two, equation three, to modify A, B, C. Second mistake, 
respectively, because now this way you mean this one. No, that's not, it's a function. It's a function is supposed to modify this, talking about A, B, C, respectively. Equation one, two, three can be used, respectively, modifies. Okay, that's, it's a function. That's why you put it at the end. More examples, um, again, you put it at the end, which means 560 is for the inner surface, 560 is for the outer surface. There is an end, there is an end. Some mistakes about respectively is unclear because it's a modifier it does not show clearly in which order for example the dynamic characteristics of a rotor with a symmetric stiffness or with initial wrap have been studied before respectively okay this is completely wrong because i've been studied before you do not need it just simply cross it out what and what right it's missing you can simply remove it and this is another incorrectness Say the using more couples. Okay, you may say, okay, I'm gonna use two thermal couples, one for inlet, another one for outlet. How come it's not respective? The reason is it's not a specific. How do you say respective? They modify something is uh, not there, right? Okay, just remove it. Okay, another typical mistake is paper study research. A report paper is a deliverable, final thing you published study research work all those are the work you did when in order to publish the paper or the report they are different try to use in this paper less than three times like grammatically or correct right however let's look at the function in this paper when you read this paper the work already done right this is what you write you cannot have any device used in writing you use a computer to write in this study which was done already you use a device if you want to emphasize the paper you can say this paper presents something the following results can be drawn from this study okay not this paper because this paper is what you are reading Conclusions in this paper that makes sense, right? Because you in this paper you have conclusions. Okay, articles A, N, and there sometimes they use V, which means the only and the solely. Pretty sure you learn this in high school. Okay, this is incorrect. I want to show you A C F D model for airflow around the cylindrical objects and the investigation of the air velocity profile around the cylinder is presented here if this is confined to around the cylindrical objects then which means this is that identified so there should be d then the investigation of air velocity no because the investigation needs some definition, but it is the investigation of air velocity. So V is not needed. It's a general air velocity profile. This cylinder is already mentioned here. So you need the lock it down because it's already mentioned above. You see the difference? Anyway, the grammatical rules of articles are very complicated for many international students. Just sometime you put something it does not belong, the other time you uh, forgot to put what you need. There are very systematic explanations. I'm uh, trying to uh, skip this part. I don't want to become a grammatical course. However, if you need help, you can ask me. I can send you some articles. More examples. The nouns, the specific ones, remember, uh, are not understood to be exact. We already used the definite article D already. We mentioned that. Okay. Non specific means A or N. Then do not need S for this reason. Very typical one are uh, this. Again, my student writes researches. This is wrong. 
if you want to use the plural, just say studies. I'm going to go through a list of words in pair. So just quickly highlight you should pay attention to in your writing. Use many or numerous. Use these words. Do not use a lot. It is informal. A lot, many, you choose many. There are words like above, aforesaid, aforementioned. Those words are vague words. Do not use them. I, you, I see a lot of people use them in writing, but they are vague because you got to tell people where exactly. Okay? Avoid all this emotional writing absolutely, definitely, entirely, completely, unquestionably. Redundant, they are redundant. Accuracy of precision. Sometimes you say our readout is more accurate than the other researchers. You got to be careful with accurate and the precision. Precision means you give a different decimals. Okay. This is a more precise than 3.14. However, it doesn't mean it's accurate. Active edge, actual edge. If you're not in mechanical engineering, this doesn't bother you. I'm in mechanical engineering. That's why I write an active edge means something become active. Actual edge is usually limited to mechanical device. Adapt, adopt. Go to adapt, which means you change, fit in. Adopt means you accept. We must adopt the latest safety guideline to adapt to the new. You see, to adapt, adapt to the new working environment. Effect and effect. Effects can function as a verb. Effect used as a verb means without in a produce, etc. Non-natives may not get it. Try to avoid using effects as a verb, if possible. Also, to in addition, this is something you may want to uh, pay attention to. Heat exchangers are used in power plants. Also, they are used in other systems. You may hear this when people talk. Heat exchangers are used in power plants. Also, they are used in these are all wrong. They say they are used too. This is okay. It doesn't mean it's wrong, okay? The heat exchangers and they are used. In addition, they are used. Okay. These are all correct. Okay. Amount, number, quantity. Amount is a mass noun, does not count by number. Say amount of cement, amount of paper, water, all those things. The number of usually is countable because then you can count one, two, three, four, right? Quantity means bulk. Either way, quantity is more formal. Okay, it's more formal. You can, if you can, use a quantity. The amount of cement is determined. The number of bags of cement is determined. The quantities of cement and sand should be determined. So that's how you use it. And or doesn't mean it's wrong, but it's not formal. So and or means or 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 both. See, for example. You can use Webex and or Zoom. This is the word in between. It's clear this way. Webex or Zoom or both. And in writing, try to use because. Always use because if possible, but since emphasize on uh, the change in condition, it, it's not exactly since is a weak substitute, but stronger than Earth. Earth is a very weak reason. As is more like um, as a very weak. Sense can be used as an additional factor emphasize on the circumstances, okay? Circumstances. However, avoid using as, okay? Avoid using this. I see a lot of people do that, but uh, in formal writing, we do not use as. Since the paper has been published, that's what I meant by there is a change in the circumstances. You also can use it because, nothing wrong with it, okay? But because emphasize the reason, the cause of action, since indicates the change of circumstance. Avoid using as such. You do see that in Writing, try to use thus 
and a therefore. As well as an and, both are valid, but when you use and, and but as well as sometimes slows down the, the pace. Average the mean, these are the statistics, mean includes average, but doesn't mean average is all the means. Okay, begin and start. This is a little bit tricky. I wouldn't uh, emphasize this too much. You can use both, although again is a very formal. Begin is more formal. Can and may are tricky. We certainly can finish the test, but we may not meet the deadline. Uh, can means your capability may show the possibility. Cannot. And cannot. This is wrong. Okay. When you meant, if you meant this or this. Can't is a contraction of cannot. You can use can't, don't, won't, or words like that. They are all contraction, but they are not used in formal writing. In formal writing, you only use cannot together. Okay, but you do have one occasion for cannot to separate, cannot only, which really meant not only together. Yeah. Let me example: carbon dioxide cannot reach. This is wrong. Okay, can't. This is informal. It's not uh, recommended. Carbon dioxide cannot reach is correct. This is wrong. Cannot only is wrong. And not only, this is correct. I suggest you keep the list of this pair of words so you can use it as a reference when you write. Just compare and contrast. I see a lot of people use compare. Remember when you are using compare, use compare to something. Contrast use with, not compare with. I see a lot of people write compare with, compare A with B. Function-wise, compare is to discover the similarity or difference, or both. Okay. However, when you contrast, in contrast, which means opposite, the difference you highlight the difference. When you use contrast as noun, contrast between. We compared our results to earlier studies. Our results contrast sharply with earlier ones. You can remove this one. It's okay to keep it, but you can remove this one. Contrast with. Or we contrast A with B. There is a sharp contrast between our results and between complement. Complement and complement from the pronunciation, you have uh, no idea they are different. Complement means with E means they are helping each other to make it complete, right? But the complement with I means praise. Our results complement the earlier. See, complement is a verb, okay? Complement the earlier findings. All reviews complement the high quality of the work, which means your work is good. And it's outstanding, fabulous. People like it. Thank you. I consider that as a compliment, but that is a compliment as a noun. Complete and the finish is very tricky. Complete is a positive word. Finish is more like a neutral and negative word. Finished. Okay. Just a uh, finish. We means finish means a stop. Doesn't mean it's a complete. So a chemical reaction could finish because of whatever reason, but it doesn't mean it's complete. Okay. I'm going to give you this example so you read it by yourself. I hope you get it. The right one, complete. The wrong one, finished. Complex means have a lot of elements, but it doesn't mean it's complicated. The complicated Sounds like you make it complex on purpose to make it more difficult. That's the difference. Okay. A complex system, a complex system has many components like an airplane. Okay. 
you have an airplane, it's a very complex, but it doesn't mean it's difficult to a pilot. The pilot can fly the airplane easily. But complexity is a noun, indicates a level of components, but it's not necessarily difficult. Complicated is used for something causing the high level of difficulty. That means it's just like not necessarily complex, made too many components in it. Continual means you do it routinely, regularly, but doesn't mean you have no stop in between. Continuous means no gap in between. Like water, when you have a cup of water, there's no gap in between. In the river, water flows continuously. Effective technical writing requires continual learning and practice. See, continual learning and practice. That's what you need. Okay. But the fluids are usually assumed continuous rather than discrete in computational fluid dynamics model. That's very technical, but I hope you get it. Continuous means there's no gap in between. Another set of uh, words, criteria and criterions. Uh, if I have to give you a suggestion which one to use, use this one. You can avoid the other one, but it doesn't mean that one is wrong because sometimes I also use criteria in my verbal communication. Both are plural, the singular are the same, criteria, okay? Criteria give you criteria or criteria, okay? However, criteria is more often used data and the data. In formal writing, data is plural and the data is singular. However, in verbal, in informal communication, data can be singular. It's only informal, different from, I'm sorry, different from typically is followed by a noun or a noun form, but different than a sentence or a clause. Example, our approach to the problem is different from theirs. An apple is different from an orange. So it's like that. We took an approach that is different than others did, due to followed by the nouns. Because of modifies the verb. Your promotion was because of your outstanding performance. This is not technical, but I can give you another technical example. The temperature rise was because of the weather. Okay, that's wrong. It should be that your promotion was due to, because the promotion due to. You were promoted due to, that's wrong. You were promoted because of. Economic is how money works, economics, right? The noun is economics. Economical means not a wasteful. Okay, I'll give you an example. If the technology was developed in an economic way, but a economic analysis, you see, an economic analysis is necessary before technology transfer. Emphasize is a verb, emphasis is a noun. Emphasize something, you put emphasis on something. You try to avoid li after first, second, third, or those words. Okay, just simply use first, second, third. Okay, list the text, whatever you want to present. Inflammable means flammable. The opposite is non-flammable. In order to avoid any confusion, you use flammable instead of non-flammable to avoid the confusion to international readers. The readers may have a difficulty to understand it. In means inside of, normally in the area or the space, okay? But into implies an action, okay? Into is a connect to the motion or movement of something to typically followed by a verb. Walking, going, come, run, put, okay. Within, I need to emphasize this word for you. Within sets the boundary. Only for time or space. 
for example, the sensor is in the device. The sensor is put into the device because there's an action, so it is put into, is in, okay? This one describe its status, this describes the action. The test will be finished in 20 minutes. A lot of non-native speakers use after. This is wrong, okay? The test must be finished within 20 minutes. Pay very close attention to the difference. On, on, to, on, it's similar to in and uh, into, okay? Pong, emphasize moment or a condition, okay? The revision of the manuscript will start upon completion of the additional test. That is a condition. Simply cross out in order, just use two, okay? Inside, inside of, just use inside, okay, rather than inside of. Keywords, this is something tricky. Keywords is uh, what you write after the, the abstract. Lay something on something, okay? Lie and lay are not interchangeable. We normally lay the filter samples on the bench and the samples lie in the lab for 24 hours before analysis. You don't write this like that, okay? I made up this sentence just to show the difference between lay and lie. The past tense of lay is laid. Okay, the past tense of lie is lay. Only solely, often interchangeable, but solely emphasize or exclusivity. Solely, okay. This patent is solely owned, or this IP is solely owned. In legal, you see the solely one. You do not use only, okay. The word only solely should proceed intent to modify, otherwise the meaning may change. I'm gonna give you an example here. Only we reported the effects of temperature on out and biofuel conversion rate. Okay, which means nobody else did it. Okay. We only reported, you see the difference? Put the word only in front of the word you want to modify. Precision is for measurement. Precision is usually for writing. Precision shows the ability to produce data consistently or the number of digits indicating the reliability. Preciseness shows the quality, especially about the details. Precision is more used for measurement. Preciseness is for description. Okay. You can improve the precision of measurement by changing the meter range from 1 to 1,000 nanometer to 10 to 100 nanometer. This way, you can detect somewhere in between precisely. You can further improve your quality of writing by checking the preciseness of punctuation. I use the measurement on purpose. In reality, you can say you can improve the precision. You do not need to write this one. I just want to show you the difference, okay? You can improve your writing. You can say that to avoid redundancy. Principle can be a noun or adjective, meaning main, primary, and also means somebody influential, like the, uh, usually the, the head of a school is called a principal in Canada. But the principal means the discipline or the, the code or the mechanism or the basics of the truth, okay? I can understand the difference by this sentence. The principal objective of this study is to understand the principle of air conditioning. Yeah, you raise something and something rise. Arise shows the action in between. Arise means begin to occur or stand up. When you raise your arm, its gravitational potential energy rises. When you arise from your chair, your gravitational potential energy rises too. Really, actually, those are the modifiers. We already mentioned that. Just uh, remove them. The reason is that or because. Do not say the reason is because, because that's uh, redundant. 
give you this one already. Those are all Americans, native English writers, okay? Regarding, with regard to, in regard to, they are all okay, but no plural here, okay? This is wrong, no regards, okay? I pointed out because a lot of people write this way, even the native Canadian, you may see this in literature, doesn't mean it is correct. There are no such phrases as in regards to or with regards to. From this example, you also can see writing isn't easy, not even to the native English speakers. So don't feel bad if your writing has problems. Don't feel bad because it is never an easy job. Shall will never use a shall in your technical writing such as, for example, et cetera, and so on, and the full force, and the like. I use all of them in my writing. If you read the book, you see that. They show there is an incomplete list. However, none of them should be used with a complete list. If you, these are for the beginning, these are for the end. However, do not use them together. You only use one. Both use and utilize are verbs, but they utilize the sounds retentious in the vague. Okay, try not to use this guy. Usage is a noun, it means action. And sometimes use can also be known. whether and if, if introducing the condition, whether to communicate with choice. Okay. However, when you write, try not to say whether or not. As to whether, those are redundant. The solvent selective depend on whether or not. You see, that's how we revise it. And the solvent activity is greater if. If tells you the condition. Sometimes while means although. But while has another function about the time. While often resulting in ambiguity. Try not to use it. I'm not trying to say you cannot use it. You are forbidden to use it. No, I'm saying this is difficult for many international readers to understand. So use a while often resulting in ambiguity. So rather you use a while when you mean during the time that. Okay, for example, I wrote this book while the university was closed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Phrase can be adjective, adverb, noun, anything. You can make it up, okay? Unlike clauses, phrase cannot state on any idea. Let's provide a context only. For example, received already. That's a phrase, but that tells you has been. It's more like because it's a be, it means like adjective, okay? Adjective. The item on the list is basically is a modifier. The verb say in list, on the list, in this one, you modify the list. A noun phrase function as a subject object and a prepositional object in a sentence. It consists of a noun and its modifiers. Whatever that means, by looking at an example, you will get it. Before the publication of your article. You see, before, this is a whole phrase, before something. The verb phrases. A phrase can also be a verb. Okay. For example, I was writing. Item should have been received. Verbal. Ver okay, a verb combined with adjective or a noun gives you a verbal. Okay, this example shows you how prepositional phrases are used. The power will turn off automatically after the temperature reaches something. Agricultural biomass waste with a higher cellulose content. That basically we all know that already. It's a, a modifier, right? Try not to overuse prepositional phrases. What do you mean by overuse? I'm going to give you an example. But with solid line on the dashed line in the figure in the lab. As I revise it for clarity. Remember, clarity is a key. You really need to pay attention to clarity. OK. 
Okay, you can use the modifiers rather than the prepositional, for example. The data in figure four presented using on the dashed line, okay, then you have a break on experimental results. You can cross that laboratory because experimental results, if you know the context in the methodology, you must have a showing experiments were conducted in lab or in the field, right? People know that already. The curve for model and that for experiments in red, you see this in red, are this for the experiment or for the model? It's not clear. That's what a vague means. It's a vague. So you need to be clear, make sure this one follows the exact one. The reason I know that because from the research, I know it is for the model. Okay, so then you have to move it to make sure it's uh, clear. Right. Participle phrases for clarity. It is only for clarity. I want to show you the example. The system having something. It's more like a modifier is chosen for further studies. Being unsatisfied the device will repair. Infinitive. Uh, just some terms. I'm pretty confident you already learned this in high school. Okay, I'm going to skip this part. Just quickly go through the example. To meet the deadline, to work. See that that's different. This tells you the the goal objectives. This is to somewhere. Okay, I went to school. Go to school, right? For education. But you go to the library to prepare. This is a noun. This is a verb. That's the difference. Uh, last but not the least, idioms, which means they cannot be literally interpreted. They have it's like a jargon. Have you the table here to show you uh, idiom and the actual meaning? Agree to means consent. Agree with means in court. Call off means cancel. Cross out all those things. Okay, so you can look up. Subject leave out means omit. They are pretty similar to each other. I would say you can use both if you know the meaning exactly. Okay. 